Work less. Consume less. Live better? Could this be the path to creating vibrant, thriving communities and healthy, happy people? For years, simple living advocates have argued that people who live in the northern industrial work and spend societies could decrease their working and spending and still live better. If predictions of a less energy intensive future come true, then cutting back will no longer be a choice. Rather, it will become an unavoidable reality. But we don't have to wait for the future to reap the benefits of a simpler way of life. A glance at the past, in particular, at the life of a company town, suggests what is possible namely, fewer hours spent working, less consumption of material goods, and surprisingly, above average quality of life. Battle Creek, Michigan, has been the home of the Kellogg Company's ready to eat breakfast cereal for nearly a century. During the Depression era of the 1920s and 30s, U.S. businesses were debating what to do about a very serious problem too many workers and not enough work. W.K. Kellogg, the company founder, alongside company president Louis Brown, decided to reduce their workers' hours rather than lay anyone off. They did something quite revolutionary they created a 30 hour work week. Kellogg and Brown wanted to show that the free exchange of goods, services, and labor in the market would not have to mean mindless consumerism or continuous exploitation of people and natural resources, as author Benjamin Hunnicutt described in his book, Kellogg's Six Hour Day. Rather, workers would be liberated by increasingly higher wages and shorter hours, allowing them to seek the freedom promised by the Declaration of Independence, the pursuit of happiness. Brown wrote to his employees about mental income, that is, the enjoyment of home life, neighbors, and other pleasures that are harder to translate into dollars and cents. All this would lead to higher standards in school and civic life. Kellogg's bold experiment was a departure from the typical American business strategy of the time, which sought to increase personal consumption and typically required ever-increasing work hours as well. Kellogg's new tactic benefited not only the company's bottom line, but also the workers and broader community. One business report found that with reduced work hours, people could engage in gardening and community beautification, athletics, and hobbies. Libraries were well patronized, and the mental health and experience of these fortunate employees and their families became richer. With extra time on their hands, Kellogg's workers had more of an opportunity to strengthen neighborhood ties through activities like canning and other types of formal and informal get-togethers. Canning, in particular, became a popular pastime for many, not just to preserve food, but, as Hunnicutt writes, as a medium for telling stories, jokes, offering practical instruction, songs, griefs, and problems. People enjoyed sharing knowledge and resources with each other, Thus, having more hours in the day allowed the community to truly blossom. A U.S. Department of Labor study of the Kellogg Company found that workers actually had very little dissatisfaction with the lower earnings resulting from their decreased hours. In fact, in 1946, after working very long days during World War II, Kellogg's employees were asked if they'd like to return to the prior work week. 77% of men and 87% of women workers voted to return to a 30-hour work week instead. Writer Jeffrey Kaplan sums up Kellogg's unusual practices. He writes, Thousands of small, almost invisible interactions between family members, friends, and neighbors created an intricate structure that supported social life in much the same way as topsoil supports our biological existence. When we allow either one to become impoverished, we put our long-term survival at risk. According to an overwhelming body of scientific evidence, both our social and biological existence is indeed impoverished by working too many hours and consuming too many products. Maybe the cereal town in Michigan offers a better solution. Maybe the intangible rewards we get from working and consuming less could actually make us more inwardly rich. If the Kellogg's model became the new normal, it might be just what society needs. Amidst predictions for a less energy-intensive future, with fewer resources to go around, it's comforting to know that people can still thrive, just as they did back at the Kellogg's company during the Depression. <laughs>